This is Mr. McCandles. Hello, Bella. There we go. It is that time of year once again for the Belfast Film Festival. It's back between the 2nd and the 11th of November. And to tell us about this year's big highlights, uh, Rose and Jessica from the festival join us in the studio. Welcome back. Good to see both of you again. Another exciting packed programme again with something for everyone, isn't there? There, there truly is. Well, we like to believe that there is, yes. Um, and we have, um, we're especially happy this year, I think, with our, with our opening and our closing, our big, our big gala events are yeah. particularly huge films and huge films with Irish angles to them as well, which is, doesn't happen every year. So um, uh, we're, we're opening with Andrew Haig's um, All of Us Strangers, which stars Paul Meskell and uh, Andrew Scott. <laughs> So you're looking at me from the street. I'm assuming you're not with anyone. I never see you with anyone. This is your mum and dad. Yeah. They died just before I was 12. I'm trying to write about them at the moment. How's it going? Strangely. Hi. Hi. Is this real? Does it feel real? Our boy's back home. Our son. Look at you. You were just a boy. Now you're not. It is truly, though, I think it's Andrew Scott's movie. It's a really, really beautiful, um, very haunting, um, very moving uh, film. And a filmmaker who we have supported in Belfast since his breakout film, Weekend, a few years ago, many years ago, actually. Um, so, um, and Andrew Haig himself, the, the filmmaker, has quite a few Northern Ireland connections as well. So um, it's a really, it's just the perfect opener for us, I think, really. Um, and it's also, it's going to figure largely in, I think, the awards conversation coming up, um, as will our closing film, which is Poor Things, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos. This is Bella. Bye, bye. Bella, this is Mr. McCandles. Hello, Bella. She's an experiment. Good evening. Her brain and her body are not quite synchronized. But she is progressing at an accelerated pace. Tell me, where did she come from? I shall. For it is a happy tale. Yeah, I'm hearing tips for Oscars and oh, things very around much this so. one. Poor Things is going to be everywhere. So if you want to get in on the ground floor and see it before all of before everybody else does, um, this is definitely the, the time to do it. Um, it stars Emma Stone, Willem Dafoe, Mark Ruffalo. And Emma Stone, I am very, very sure, is going to be nominated for Best Actress. And she very well might win um, for this performance. It's an absolutely crazy, brilliant, very joyous film. It's wonderful. We've also got the gala screening of uh, The Last Rifleman with Pierce Brosnan, who's looking very old in this photograph, isn't he? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's actually made up to look um, a lot older than he actually is. And it's a really interesting departure for him. It's a very different, you know, it's a very different Pierce Brosnan than we're used to. And uh, yeah, it's a really great story. It's based on a true story and it's a fantastic local production. And yeah, it's going to be great. And lots of local actors popping up. Tara Lynn O'Neill, Ian McElhenney, they're all in this as well, aren't they? Yeah, it's a fantastic supporting cast, actually. Yeah, there's, you know, fam uh, familiar faces uh, like those. And uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a, it tells the story of a um, an elderly veteran who uh, goes for the first time to France, but he kind of escapes his 
his old people's home, his nursing home, and uh, and takes a kind of an odyssey to uh, to his uh, to the commemorations in northern France. And along the way, he meets a lot of people and share. They all share stories, and it's a really interesting, heartwarming portrayal. Sounds amazing. Okay, as well as those kind of movies, you're supporting all the local stuff as well. In particular, the shorts as well. You do a big competition around that every year, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Once again, our shorts competition and we have selected uh, we have a brilliant selection team and they rigorously select the very best of the submissions that re we receive every year we get more and more and more submissions every year mm -hmm. it just is such a strong field it's a real task for them to select the the the, these fantastic films but that's going to be very competitive and a really great selection yeah. a large program but it just i think goes to show just how much the reputation of our shorts film competition is growing as well as the uh, new movies i've just noticed sunset boulevard directed by billy wilder's popping up as well that's this year. right yes yes exactly well we have to you know mix in some of the older stuff there and actually that's part um one of the focuses um this year uh, when we were drawing up the programme, obviously the writers, the Writers Guild was still on strike and as we, as we sit here now, the actors are still on strike. So one of the focuses that we decided to, to build our programme around, and I think we might be one of the only festivals in the world to do this, is to really actually embrace that and to, to work in a kind of a cer certain revolutionary and subversive um, edge yeah. to this to this year's competition. So one of the to this year's uh, festival selection. Um, but so one of the the aspects of that is um, talking about screenwriting and screenwriters. And so uh, Sunset Boulevard is there as part of our screenwriters on screen retrospective. So we have three films which feature. Um, the travails of, of Hollywood screenwriters and Sunset Boulevard very much fits into that. We also have Barton Fink by the Coen brothers and um, Adaptation directed by Spike Jones and uh, written by Charlie Kaufman, wow. which is uh, starring Nicolas Cage as well. So those are our three retrospectives and they're all built around this idea of how hard it is to be a screenwriter. And Sunset Boulevard fits in nicely because it's just reopened, of course, in the West End with Nicole Scherzinger and our very own Rachel Tucker playing Norma Desmond on a Monday now as well. In That's there, right. So, yeah. That's right. The stars have really aligned for Sunset Boulevard <laughs> at the moment. Yes. Hedda Harper speaking. I'm talking from the bedroom of Norma Desmond. Don't bother with a rewrite, man. Take this direct. Ready? As day breaks over the murder house. Yes, you'll read the big black headlines about Norma Desmond and this Hollywood scandal. But you'll never read the true story about the rest of us who were part of it. I see King Kong is making an appearance. I just yeah, opened to that absolutely. page. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. King Kong, that's actually the Strand Cinemas event, and they're showing King Kong on 35mm on wow. a print, and it's because it's the 90th anniversary, so obviously an icon of Hollywood, yeah. and that's a really fantastic um, sort of event that we have, and I would go to that if I wasn't <laughs> probably doing other things <laughs> that night, yeah, thanks, yeah. but it's one of the things that I would absolutely love to see. I think it's going to be a brilliant experience. Tell me about Kneecap as well, because they're an act that everybody's talking talking about at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. We're really excited for the kneecap event. It's actually a work in progress event, which is something we sometimes do at the festival where it's a film that isn't completed yet. So it's not a premiere. It's actually just looking at clips of the film with uh, the film, the filmmaker, Rich Pepiat, and the director of photography, Ryan Carnahan. So they're going to be discussing their process and showing us some exclusive clips. So that's going to be really exciting. Brilliant. Okay, I've had to push you for a favourite or a highlight, one or two highlights, Jessica. What would you choose? Well, I'm going to have to, uh, sh I'll, I'll shout out two, two particular highlights, um, which obviously encompass a whole bunch of things, each of them. Um, but uh, firstly, I'm going to have to shout out my international competition. Um, this is only the second year that we're running an international competition. Last year's was such a big success, and it is for first and second filmmakers. Um, and it's from, for a selection that's from all over the world. So we have a film from Sudan, we have a film from Mongolia, we have two films from the UK. Um, you know, so we're, we're trying to be as global as possible. And I think it's a really interesting selection for people to come in if they're, if they're the kind of cinephile who isn't just interested in what's going on right now, but wants to invest in the future yeah. of cinema and see where, where the trends are going. So that's one thing that we're always going to be very excited about. Um, and I'm particularly made up with this with this particular selection. I think it's really, really great. Um, I travel to a lot of film festivals all over the world, so this to me is the really the creme de la creme, the cream you of the, the crop. You have the best job in the world. I do I have the you. best job in the world. I really do. Um, uh, so this is this is me like um, uh, bringing back the spoils of my great job and, and sharing them with with the Belfast audience.
audiences, which is really exciting. Um, so there's that, and then also we're just incredibly honoured, especially because of this focus that I was saying this year. So we have this focus on screenwriters, but also on strikes and on work processes and in the many ways that capitalism and the gig economy can be oppressing us these days. So we have a kind of a, um, a, a focus on that as well. Um, and within that, we're incredibly lucky and incredibly honoured to be able to be awarding um, a, a, a true pioneer of independent cinema in John Sayles. So John Sayles is a two-time Oscar-nominated screenwriter, but he's also a director. And he and his producer, Maggie Renzi, um, are responsible for one of the most highly political, but really beautiful and incredibly well um, uh, thought through and uh, thoughtful filmographies in the independent cinema world. He's much almost regarded as the father of US uh, independent cinema. Um, and uh, so we're showing several of their films and he also has an In Conversation event, um, which will be really thrilling for anybody who is even remotely interested in the history of film and in the history of independent cinema and how to maintain an independent uh, spirit in a world that's becoming increasingly corporate and increasingly and an industry that's becoming increasingly corporate. Okay, Rose, I'm going to push you for a couple of highlights. What's oh, yours? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's obviously so many to choose from, but um, personally, I'm really excited about There's a documentary that we're showing called Last Things by an artist filmmaker called Deborah Stratman. We're actually doing it in conjunction with um, a group here in Belfast called Graw Night, and they do um, nights around sort of mixed arts nights around um, the celebration of like ancient stones and how they've been sort of inspiring artists for like thousands of years. So that's, it's a film, it's a documentary about rocks and about, uh, you know, so how these things kind of uh, exist all around us for the history of time and how they, you know, come from biological matter, plant matter, and then, you know, the processes around that and how they come from space and how some of the rocks that we have here on Earth that have come from space are actually older than the universe. So like that's, you know, it's, it's really, um, it's a really brilliant film. It's like a bomb, like a salve for sort of current anxieties about like the climate crisis and the end of the world and things. And it's just going to be a really, really great night, just a celebration of film and also of music with Vicky Langan, the uh, sound artist who's coming to perform as well. And that's going to be in the black box. There's also another event I'm really excited about, which is a dog friendly screening. Wow. So we're actually <laughs> showing this fantastic documentary called Whose Dog Am I? Right. And uh, the filmmaker is, uh, from the uh, Hungarian uh, sort of a minority that live in Romania yeah. um, on the border with Hungary and it's about his uh, sort of uh, sort of search for uh, meaning I guess yeah. like it becomes it becomes a sort of a political exploration but it's actually it starts off with him wanting to find a mate for his dog right. he has this rare breed this rare Hungarian breed this kind of sheep dog right. and it's a very hilarious dog as well like it's uh, it's one of the most <laughs> funny exactly sort of dog. documentary characters and the dogs speak there's lots of yes, the dogs speak. The dogs speak. <laughs> Obviously, that's just really going to be fantastic for the dogs in the room as well. Yes. You know, they don't need translation. Nos, kicsit makacsak kutya, autonóm gondolkodású. Az autonóm gondolkodás is magyar nemzeti tulajdonság. Kellett nekünk kicsi kutya. Beleszólt a politika. So it's going to be really fun. That's also in the black box. That sounds like a first. I mean, this is amazing stuff, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if people want more information, they want to book their tickets, where can they go to for that? Yeah, BelfastFilmFestival.org is the place to go. We will do that. Thank you for coming in and uh, the best of luck with this year's festival. Thank you very Thank much. You.